Hi, my name is Colin Mitchell. I'm a sustainable agriculture specialist at the National Center for Appropriate Technology. I'm out here at PPC Farms in Mission, Texas, and we'll be looking at cowpea as a subtropical, hot and humid cover crop option as part of the Subtropical Soil Health Initiative funded by the USDA NRCS Conservation Innovation Grant. Cowpea is a legume species cover crop that is typically used in warm seasons across the United States. Many of you know it as black-eyed peas, which is eaten across the south and is typically eaten on New Year's for good luck. The variety we chose for our arm farm trials was an iron and clay cowpea. We planted it using a no-till drill. In this field, we planted at 60 pounds per acre, and then another field at 40 pounds per acre. We did this different seeding rate because we wanted to see what the different densities did for weed suppression. As you can see, it's about two to three feet tall, and other climates, it's gonna grow up to almost six feet tall because of our hot and long days here. It tends to be a little bit shorter. Um, and it was planted about 55 days ago, and in other places it takes 70 to 90 days to mature, and this is already almost mature. Um, it's starting to put off flowers and soon it'll be putting off pods. Cowpeas typically release 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen per acre when grown as an annual. They also can produce 2,500 to 4,000 pounds of biomass per acre when planted as an annual crop. Cowpeas are a great option for cover crops in hot and humid areas, such as down here in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. It's not only a good tool for suppressing weeds, but it also limits wind erosion and water erosion from runoff. Not only that, it also covers the soil, lowering soil temperatures, which can conserve soil microbiology and just soil health in general. One challenge we found in cover cropping is selecting the right seed for the right climate, right pH, and right soil type. We found here in the Rio Grande Valley that iron and clay cowpea has done really well when we planted it in March, April, and May. And our springs down here in the Rio Grande Valley are much hotter than a lot of people's summers across the United States. We also believe, and we're going to trial, planting them in February as well as June, and we think they will be successful at those planting times as well. Hello, my name is Lindsay Richards, and I'm the Senior Research Technician for the Subtropical Soil Health Initiative. Uh, with UTRGV. Um, so as you know, cowpeas have the potential to fixate atmospheric nitrogen into a plant-soluble form, which is why farmers would like to plant these legume species. We're learning how important the process of inoculation is when planting cowpeas with the desired trait of fixating nitrogen. It's important to inoculate your cover crops with, with the associated rhizobium because that population may not be established in your soil yet, so it's important to introduce it. In order to ensure inoculation, you need to inoculate your cowpea or legume species with the correct rhizobium. And that is normally we get it in a peat soluble form. Different legume species are associated with different types of bacteria, so you want to make sure that the inoculum you purchase uh, is for the species that you are planting. When you inoculate your seed, you need to plant within 24 hours. It's highly recommended to use a sticking agent such as gum arabic to ensure that the rhizobium sticks to the seed. It's important when inoculating the seed with the rhizobium to use purified water. After 30 days of planting your cover crop species, you should pull up a few plants and check for nodules. They're little balls on the roots, and if you open them up and you see pink, that means they're actively fixating the atmospheric nitrogen. If they're brown, that means they're inactive, and it could be due to nitrogen levels in the soil or inadequate moisture levels.